Scott asks me why images like these sometimes have the sky overexposed. So I've created a scene to show you three scenarios that will definitely make you understand what's going on. Let's talk about exposure problems. If we look closely at this image, we can see that the amount of light is balanced and uniform over the entire image and with the exposure control in Corona, but also in V-Ray, finding the right value is very intuitive. That's why in this case the sky is easy to photograph with its colors together with the rest of the image. So why did the sky burn sometimes? But to explain to you what exposure problem we can face in similar scenarios, we need to broaden our gaze a bit, so you can understand the root of this problem and therefore also how to manage it. To do this, I created three different scenarios. One in which this area is completely open, a second one in which it is opened but at the same time covered by a roof and a side wall. A last one in which this area is part of an interior and it has a large window. What is the difference of these three situations? The difference lies in the amount of light these two areas receive. In the scenario number one, zone A and B are hit by the same amount of light. In this case, the same exposure value will be ok for both areas. In the scenario number 2, area A receives a little less light due to the roof and the side wall. This means that the perfect exposure for A is not quite the same as the perfect one for B. In fact, if minus 1.7 is a fine, if we look at the sky only, a slightly higher value like minus 0.5 would be ideal looking only at the seats. However, these values are close enough so we can easily find an average value that fits almost everything. Minus 1 is a good compromise. In scenario number 3, however, the amount of light in area A is much, much less than the one in area B. In fact, if we focus only on A, ignoring the rest of the image, we see that to obtain exposure suitable only for this area, we have to increase its value by 2. But if we see how this exposure affects the rest of the image, it's clear that it will be impossible to photograph a blue sky and at the same time have the interior bright. So to recap, uniform light, easy exposure. Small light differences, easy compromise. Big differences in light, situation to manage. That's why the image seen at the beginning, which falls under scenario number 2, has a nice soft light and the sky is not overexposed. Now back for a moment to the last scenario. How to handle this situation? There are two ways to manage it. One, accept that the sky is totally white. Of course, if it's all just white, it'll be a little weird. So the ideal is to have elements that enrich this area. So if in addition to the overexposed sky we see other details such as trees for example and we add a glow, the result will be quite natural. Actually, if you search for interior photographs, you'll see that the exterior is often completely white, with some details that make that area more pleasant as just explained. Or an amazing trick is to blend the two images, but this is something that we can only do in post-production. Let's see how to do it. Save an image with the right exposure from interior, another image with the exposure for the exterior, and finally a mask to separate the areas. Then we put them as layers in Photoshop like this, applying the mask to the underexposed layer. And we complete by adding a gradient to blend the two areas with different exposures. This technique is called blending and is used to solve impossible exposures like this one. Would you like to know more about this technique? Subscribe my channel and watch this video.